We threw up a poll at Junks Radio as to how you would grade the Redskins draft. 55% give it a B. That's solid. I, I would have right. loved nothing but Bs when I came Take home with bees. a report card in high yeah. school. I would have been thrilled. Straight Bs? <laughs> would have loved it. I'm actually, annoyed by, I'm actually annoyed by Bs. I feel like they should get an A. <laughs> 24% gave it an A. If yeah. you put that together, that's nearly 80%. Um, 15% gave it a C, and 6% gave it a D or lower. And think about the general negativity that comes with talking about the Redskins, yeah. talking about organizational decisions. By and large, people liked it, B or better. The, the only quibble is- I had was, uh, and we talked about it once they took Gibson, but I would have said, and I'm just a fan, just, but watching Brian Edwards from South Carolina is just a freak athletically, and he's an accurate. You know, he's not real fast, but he's got ridiculous hands. He just made ridiculous catches. Uh, for South Carolina, and he's bigger. He was about six four. But um, maybe you know, the skins. Gibson, maybe they feel like Gandy Golden. But look, is, these is guys, similar. These guys watched every single play yeah. of every player they drafted. Pro- probably every player in the draft. So they knew a lot more than me. So they decided Gibson was the guy. I mean, I think there are things you can quibble with. Like I said, I would have gone with the tight end with that fourth round pick. They decided to go the entire draft without drafting a tight end, and mm-hmm. they went the undrafted free agent route. By taking Randy Moss's son. Well, I think there was so about four, taken a- four or five tight ends selected in the fourth round. So after after the Skins took Charles, you know, you already talked about Bryant going. He went like five or six picks later. And then right. I think there were three or four tight ends selected after that. So once they got through the fourth round, I'm sure that all the tight ends they were looking at were, were already gone. And NFL and teams, they, they fall prey to the same run on positions as fantasy drafters do. Like, they see a bunch of tight ends go off the board. They feel like they have to get theirs or running back or wide out, whatever spot it is. I mean, I know Sadiq Charles had suspension issues and missed, you know, six games last year uh, for the the suspension, but he's still 6'4", 320. He's 20 years old. He played at LSU. He's a left tackle. You know, he's a monster. He's just a monster, dude. So um, there's upside there, no doubt. And it's a position of need. They need a a left tackle. So exactly. I don't hate that pick. I thought every pick fit a position of need or a a want you know something that this team needed and that's why i give it such a great grade so i don't know how people can knock it but whatever i mean you could clearly knock it once they start playing but just like on paper i thought it was a home run i was actually disappointed when i was looking up and not everybody was giving them an a (laughs) all right let's open up the phone lines 800-636-1067 what'd you make of the redskins draft I think when you talk the draft, you do have to include the Trent Williams deal. Unless you want to separate it out. To me, that was part of it. They were able to pick up a third or a third rounder next year and yeah. a fifth rounder this year. So that's the best that they could do at that point. Yeah. Hmm. At least it's over with. But they were running that. out of options. They were running out of teams that they could do deals with because it seemed like every other team was drafting an offensive tackle and just turning their back on Trent Williams and saying, we're, we'd rather just go with a young guy we can draft and develop. Well, they were lucky. With their headaches. The, the Williams camp was lucky that the Niners left tackle. What was the kid's name? Joe he Staley. Retired. Yeah, Staley just yeah. retired. Right. So, and the Niners knew that. They knew that, yeah. They kept that under the vest. But um, what if that situation wasn't playing out? I mean, we could still have this guy. Yep, you could still have an impasse on your yeah. hands. But yeah. you know what? He's going to the Niners. He's going to be with his old coach. He's going to a place where he's got a legitimate chance of winning a Super Bowl. Um. He doesn't have to go block for Cousins. And uh, so, you know, who knows if he actually forced his way out of the Vikings deal. That was one of the rumors out there. But, um, yeah, like you said, at least this is behind the skins now. They don't have to worry about it anymore. And I was a little bit shocked to see that <clears throat> they don't have a new the framework of a new deal in place for him <clears throat> in San Francisco. It looks like he's just going to go and play on that last year on his deal, and they'll right. work on another deal down the road. Yeah, well, you, you know, you, you just you earn it. Let's see how good yeah. he is. Now, part of the reason I think why the Redskins, so Valdez actually posted a very cool uh, draft uh, grade little, uh, I don't know, chart. draft here, chart. And, you know, I think part of the reason why the Redskins are sort of middle of the pack here is because they're the Redskins. And people just, you know, they, it's, you're holding it against them. Uh, but the Vikings and the Cowboys, they seem to by far, uh, and the Ravens, the Ravens always get good draft grades. Mm-hmm. Um, those, those seem, uh, the, the Vikings got A's. There's like 10 or 12 different guys. They got A's from everybody, but, but Maskey from the public. They had a ton of draft picks. Yeah. Kuiper gives the Redskins a C plus. Yeah. yeah. That's so weird to me. Well, I maybe think it's he doesn't like the Redskins. Uh, maybe he doesn't like Bias. Gibson as much as others.
That's yeah. the thing. The, 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 the thing about the guys that the Redskins drafted, they're, they're versatile, and I'm sure that Scott Turner will figure out where to put them on the field. But when you talk about Gibson, for example, is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? He's everything. I don't think it matters. He's a positionless yeah. type player. He's yeah, they're going to put him then, everywhere. They're going to mix and it then up with, with Gandy Golden. I'd assume he's a wide receiver, but he's not fast. He's just big. He's not slow. He's yeah, I don't relative. think he's. Here's the thing about Gandy Golden. He was super productive. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you turn him into a tight end. I think. You, I don't, I, yeah, he's too light. He's yeah, too, you play him at wide receiver, and you, you hope you get something close to the production you got. And one of the reasons the, the Vikings got an A, probably they had 15 selections. Right. They got 15 new players. Now, not all of them are going to make the squad, but they got some depth there. All right, let's bang out some of these calls. 800-636-1067. Uh, where did our guy go? Who is it there? It is, it Roy. is Roy in Spotsylvania. Roy, what's up, buddy? You're on with the Junkies. Hey, good, good morning, Junks. How you doing? Hello, what's up, Roy? Roy. Okay. Hey, first thing, thank you for the uh, Pazaro's gift card. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're Appreciate welcome. Appreciate that. Good. And, uh, okay, um, Gandy Golden, I saw him play at, at Liberty. I've seen him play six times. My in-laws live in Lynchburg, so I get to go to a few games every year. Right. Oh. You know, yeah. so what I mean, was your take? he's not going to be a Hall of Famer, but he's going to be solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I told you John know. Lennon. <laughs> what is, what, and, he's not going to be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, he's going to be solid. And then Chase Young. That was a no-brainer, you know. Right. I haven't been a Skins fan in 25 years. Now I will go be one again this year. Wow. Gandy Golden and Chase Young make you a Redskins fan again. Yeah, what Kuiper <laughs> said about Gandy Golden is he called him a 6'4 raw wide out with a massive 77-inch wingspan. Attacks the ball in the air, though he'll need some time to develop. I got nothing wrong with that. That's fine. He's you a mid-round he develops. Pick. That, that's yeah, what you generally that. do with mid-round <clears throat> picks. Yeah, Kept exactly. waiting for but Josh the, Doxson to develop. It never really happened. But the guy from CBS, Chris Trapasso, who graded every every pick from every team, gave him an A. Yeah, so it's eye, it's eye of the beholder. You know, Kuiper oh, didn't like him is. as much. Definitely <clears> is. <throat> Chad Reuter gave him an A. Daryl Slater from NewJersey.com gave him an A. Doug Farrar gave him an A. Well, A-. minus. Um, Nate Davis from USA Today gave him an A-. minus. So, I mean, they definitely got some high grades. Hey, look, I think if you just – if you think about it, if one of those two weapons works out, it's good. 